We're calling to order the second meeting uh, of the Artificial Turf Study Committee of Arlington, uh, the meeting on December 12th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Uh, I think usually we do, we start off by just doing the roll call, see who's here, which we have to do uh, because it's a all virtual meeting. We have to do the actual roll. So no show of hands, just wait for your name. So Natasha, would you do that? Yes. Uh, Mike Gildgame? Yes, present. Uh, Leslie Mayer? Here. Joe Barr? Here. Jill? Present. <coughs> Natasha here. M Marvin? Not quite yet. Uh, Jim? Detilio? Here. Present. Uh, David Morgan? I'm here. And Joe Conley. Here. Okay. Okay. Hey, we have a quorum. Um, oh. So the first Just order of business is acceptance of the meeting minutes. And I want to thank Natasha for putting those together very quickly. Um, recording in progress. And actually, we'll see a message about a recording in progress. We'll address that in a second, but probably should start with the meeting minutes and then I'll uh, maybe move something around on the agenda so we can address um, sort of public public input and recording and all this all these related issues going forward. But um, first things first, why don't we start with the meeting minutes? I hope everyone had a chance to look at them. Does anyone have any edits uh, that they would like to make or recommend? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, so we'll do the roll. Uh, Mike? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Joe? Barr? Yep. Jill? Yep. Natasha? Yes. Um, Marvin? I don't see him yet. Uh, Jim? Yes. It's unanimous. Um, so, um, the next item is correspondence received, but to some degree that relates a little bit to item five, discussion methods for public input. So I'll start on two, but we may move up five and sort of talk about the two of them together, uh, because I think it's just good to talk about sort of ground rules for the committee going forward. Um, so. Uh, in terms of correspondence received, uh, what Natasha and I talked about and I, what, she, what you ended up getting with the copy of the agenda that you received uh, in advance of this meeting was a copy of the chat. Anything that was posted publicly in the chat um, was uh, included as part of, um, you know, public comment received, basically. Um, and uh, I think going forward, though, we'd like to have a more formal process for receiving public comment. And I've received a few inquiries, and I think Natasha's received a few inquiries about how best people can, or what's the best way people can uh, reach out to us with with their comments and with their, uh, if they want to, you know, make recommendations to us about research paths or anything they want to sort of weigh in on, which I believe the committee was open to the idea of people sub making written submissions but not necessarily having a, a designated spot in each meeting for public comment. Um, so I think talking to Natasha, one of the ideas we wanted to propose was that people could submit anything they wanted at any time. Obviously, short, shorter is better. Sending us a you know 17 page you know letter is not going to be as effective as sending us you know a one page letter that really makes your points pretty succinctly. But um, but, you know, that's up to people for, for the moment. We'll sort of say there are no no limits to what people can send us, though we, we'd hope they'd be succinct. Uh, but if they want to send it to us and have it included with uh, as correspondence attached to our next meeting agenda, they need to, you know, we'll, we'll let people know what our meeting schedule is ahead of time, when, when we're going to meet the next time. And so the idea would be that if we're saying, for example, we're going to meet next Tuesday and Natasha's goal is to, uh, goal and the requirement is to post it by, you know, two business days before um, that, you know, that she receive it before that posting is due. So, you know, if it's 
if we're having a Tuesday meeting, she should get it by, you know, I'd say at the latest Friday morning at nine o'clock, uh, you know, realistically probably better to get it Thursday at, you know, five by five o'clock. Um, otherwise it will be provided, but it just won't be till the next meeting. Although I can't stop a member of the public from submitting a uh, testimony or, 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 or uh, public comment to each of us individually, I would strongly urge that the better system is to just send it to Natasha and me, who, who will who will distribute it to the group, but just in a more orderly manner that's, you know, sort of in a way that's follows a schedule and doesn't overwhelm our inboxes. Um, I know I'm not going to be able to stop people from, you know, reaching out to each one of us, you know, in a blast email, but I, I think we'd all prefer it to be a little more uh, streamlined. Um, and um, in a related point, um, I think we've talked about, I think last meeting there was sort of a general consensus that there would be potentially down the road opportunities for community comment, community forum, community input, you know, maybe we might even have towards the towards the end of our process a meeting where it's all a whole meeting of public input. But in the short term, we would not have a designated public comment period, but we would allow these these opportunities to submit public comment. And for the moment, I've decided in consultation with Natasha, but I'm, you know, obviously interested to hear what the rest of you think. But I have decided that I think I will leave the chat open for now. Um, you know, I think it was somewhat helpful to see what some people offered in the in the in the chat last time. I, I am conflicted a bit because if this were an in-person meeting, uh, you know, it's the somebody said to me once, you know, comments in the chat is the equivalent of somebody, you know, yelling at you while you're having a meeting, which if this were an in-person meeting, that wouldn't happen. But obviously it isn't an in-person meeting and there is an opportunity to comment. And I think if it's done in a reasonable way, we should allow it at least initially. Um, and I think it was done in a reasonable way the first meeting. But, you know, I think the caveat is this is subject to reevaluation as we go along. So for the moment, I'm inclined to leave the chat open, to leave this other avenue for public mm -hmm. written public comment and down the road to have a more formal meeting where we receive, you know, in you know verbal public comment, are people generally comfortable with that? If not, you know I'm I'm open to all alternative viewpoints. Michael, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good idea. I think to let people express themselves, their opinions through the chat, um, and we'll see how it goes. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so far, so good. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think related to that is just uh, two things I want to say. And I do want to say, welcome, Marvin. Good to have you here. Um, and just acknowledging Marvin Lewitton's joined us. Um, in that vein, also the issue of um, recording. So uh, recording and open meeting. So uh, the open meeting law is pretty clear on this. If you, there's a section that's, specifically on, on the point of, of recordings and open meetings. And the, the open, Attorney General's Open Meeting Law Guide says, any member of the public may make an audio or video recording of an open session of a public meeting. However, a member of the public who wishes to record a meeting must first notify the chair and must comply with reasonable requirements regarding audio or video equipment established by the chair so as not to interfere with the meeting. And the chair is required to inform other attendees of any such recording at the beginning of the meeting. And if obviously people arrive later in the meeting, you make them aware later in the meeting. So uh, with technology, it's wonderful. Uh, we are recording the meeting. So anytime you join the meeting, you know it's being recorded because there's a prompt. Um, there was a request to record the meeting by uh, ACMI. Uh, but I think what we're just going to do is I think we're going to record the meeting ourselves. I think if, if there's multiple requests to record the meeting, I think there's obviously an interest in having our meetings recorded. And if that's the case, I think we'll just, Natasha and I decided we'd just make it easier on everyone. We would record the meeting, post it on our, post it on our site, you know, and, and it would be there as a record. And uh, if we're going to go down that road, I think it's just easier and better for all if we just do it ourselves. Are people comfortable with that? I mean, the reality is people are going to record us regardless, uh, as long as they give us a heads up. So why not just, uh, why not just do it ourselves, I guess. Okay. 
so for that reason, you see, we are recording this meeting and you all hit the prompt uh, if you agreed. So, um, you know, we'll obviously still be taking meeting, meeting minutes, but just so everyone's aware, both on the committee and members of the public, we are recording the meeting. Uh, open meeting, just a, a, a couple of quick comments. So, um, you know, we have to be careful as any public body, and we are a public body, that, um, you know, we don't, uh, there's a fine line under the open meeting law between sort of sending out agendas and, uh, you know, communicating sort of business items to the group and um, engaging in what might be called a deliberation. Um, and so anytime you're sending an email to the whole committee, that's constitutes at least a quorum of the committee, you, you could run into some issues. So before we go too far down the road with this committee, I'd say, um, if there is something you want to share with the group, uh, with the committee, and there is something, uh, you know, a study you want to make us aware of, a, a particular presentation, I would probably think the better way to do it is to send it to Natasha and me, and we can send it out as sort of part of, you know, our, our, our committee communications, you know, included as a, one of the items mm -hmm. with the uh, agendas and the minutes. Um, uh, I think it's just better and it avoids, you know, someone sending an email, then someone commenting on that, then someone commenting the comment, and next thing you know, you're the horse is out of the barn and you're having a full-fledged deliberation, whether you intended to or not. So um, I'd really like to avoid open meeting law violations uh, and, and stick to the spirit of the law. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, is everyone okay with everything I've said so far? Okay. Natasha, I can't remember if there's any other ground rules I mentioned that we should get out of the way before we jump into the meat of this meeting, but I, I think that's kind of the most important stuff. Yeah. Um, now I'm excited to actually talk about the next item on the agenda, which going backwards now uh, would be item three, discussion of establishment of working groups. So Natasha, I've I've sort of been uh, yammering on about things. Do you maybe want to mention a little bit sure. about our, because I think our last meeting you, you said um, you gave sort of a thumbs up to Natasha and me having sort of a discussion about some possibilities and some pathways to streamline the discussion at this meeting for, for our next steps. And um, Natasha, do you want to say what our sure. thoughts were in that meeting? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, really to get this work done, I think we are all sort of in agreement that we probably need to break it up into subcommittees. And so it really is going to, or I don't want to call them subcommittees, but more like working groups. And so it's really going to come down to sort of trying to put items into a bucket. And, um, you know, Jim and I have sort of gone back and forth and thought, you know, maybe, um, you know, three, four types of, of subcommittees. Um, and smaller groups working on them. And so just for, you know, example, um, you know, we've got the health issue, we've got safety issues, we've got environmental issues. Um, there's definitely going to be overlap in some of these things, but I do think that they all deserve their own official deep dive into um, those items. I think that's really what town meeting um, did. And so I don't know what others sort of think. And then the other piece of that will be sort of drilling down under health, what exactly we want to look at, what exactly under um, environmental, what exactly under safety. And I think, you know, I heard um, last week at our meeting, uh, there was also a, a mention about, you know, economic, you know, responsibility and, and what have you, you know, what, what the budget's going to look like. And I think, I'm not entirely sure if that fits into all of buckets or, and I'm calling them buckets and I mean groups, um, or if it's going to mean that they, it's its own. So I guess that's sort of up for discussion. What do, and Jim, I don't want to take over, but um, you know, what, what does the group sort of think about that? Um, open meeting law, the way that it, it seems like it would pertain to this, um, the work, if, if we're doing smaller working groups, um, and there's three or less members in them, it's not subject, subjected to uh, open meeting law requirements. That being said, um, I think if we were to work in those smaller groups, the idea would be that we're able to work on these topics and bring it back as a whole, obviously to present to, to everyone. Um, you know, on, this, on the committee, we can talk about that. And then 
Um, as Jim had mentioned, it, it might even be, you know, after we've talked and decided we agree with this or not, or what have you, that it's opened up for um, some sort of additional public comment. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of material and a lot of information that needs to be um, looked into. And so, mm. you know, I think it sort of makes sense uh, to, to sort of work in those um, smaller groups, but want to open it up to, to you guys and see what you think. And Jim, let me um, hang on one second. Let me unmute you. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Technology, right? It's, it's great when it's great and it's okay. Jim, you uh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I, I won't, I won't mute myself again, okay. I guess. Um, and before I, you know, just to put a fine point up before I go to Michael, who uh, raised his hand, um, you know, the idea of these working groups is, uh, you know, my my vision is once they're formed, I mean, there's a report back every meeting, you know, it's a standing item on the agenda. So, you know, I don't want anyone to think that these groups are going to go off, you're never going to hear from them again, and then they're going to magically produce recommendations and no one knew where they came from. I mean, they're they're going to be working continuously in parallel with this committee and, and reporting back to this committee on, you know, if we're meeting weekly, then they'll be reporting weekly. And some weeks they may have a lot to report and some weeks they may have less, but uh, either way, there'll be a standing item in the agenda. I just think um, the ability for them to be smaller and more nimble would also allow, you know, the very things that I said make this larger committee sort of difficult for us to even engage in like an email dialogue, a smaller group that's according to town council, if it's less than a quorum, you know, they can, they can maybe engage in some, you know, back and forth over email as, you know, as long as, you know, they're reporting out to us every week and they just have a little more flexibility here, um, which I think is important in our, in terms to keep the, the work moving. Um, so we had sort of envisioned three groups. I, I know they're, you know, some people say health and safety. I think Marvin may have brought this up at one point that, you know, health and safety shouldn't be seen as two separate issues, um, but they could be um, if they were crafted in a certain way. But I could also see why they might need to be combined. Uh, environment, you know, could be its own, uh, but it could also be broken down into, you know, environment, sustainability. I guess the most important thing, I think, at least this agenda item is to get the input from all of you of how do we unpack this? How do we, you know, I think ideally three working groups would be the, the right number. So we could have, you know, three, three, two, um, or sorry, three, two, two, uh, in terms of numbers. Um, uh, but, uh, and, and Natasha's right there, no matter how we break this down, there'll be some overlap, but, um, but I'm interested now to shut up and sort of hear what everyone has to say. So Mike, you, you want to kick it off. Sure. Uh, thanks. I, I just had a thought that would sort of apply to all the working groups. And that is that uh, I, I know we all want that whatever report comes out of this effort to have integrity and be respected by all parties. Um, and I know that given the uh, differences of opinion within the town itself, uh, some very strong opinions, I think it might help uh, for each of those groups to uh, have some guidelines on what kind of sources they look at uh, rather than, I mean, there are hundreds out there, as we all know, there's lots of uh, studies. And I think it would be important for us to come up with some guidelines on uh, what kinds of uh, reference material we want to look at and what we want to not, we don't necessarily want to include. So, it you know, we at least want to acknowledge the source of the uh, study, you know, who paid for it, what the employment status is. There's some, some guidelines so that we're all uh, on the same wavelength in terms of uh, do we have a credible report at the end of the day or are people going to pick it apart uh, in one way or another? I think our thought, because uh, I think we'd like to meet one more time before the holiday, maybe take off the week between between uh, Christmas and New Year's. So whether we would, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that we would meet, you know, next week and that the idea for then take a break and come out again, swinging the week of uh, the first week of January. But but the idea would be that this meeting was would sort of be the meeting where we would think about uh, what are our subgroups? I think the next agenda item is what's in each subgroup. And then I think our goal for next week's meeting would be, okay, we have the subgroups, we have the topic areas, What's the 
what's the research? What's the folk? What's what's the uh, what studies are you know is each of these going to be looking at? What's some recommendations in terms of the research research paths? Now that we have the the groups and the topics within them, so Mike, I'm I'm totally with you completely, and I think our goal was maybe to have that discussion next week. But to get there, I think we just need to know what are the groups and what are the areas within the groups. Yeah. Okay. As long as we get there. <laughs> there must be some other thoughts. I'm hoping there are other thoughts. Marvin. Oh, Marvin, I'm sorry. <laughs> One second. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry about that. I, I kind of reflexively mute myself in meetings just so it's like, but um, no, I, I think that's reasonable. But, you know, I, I'll just say to, to Mike's point, um, you know, when I look at stuff, I'm trying to look at, you know, kind of, I guess, what what you might characterize as, you know, just reputable sources, you know, you know, peer reviewed, you know, studies, um, you know, governmental organizations, and I'm, I'm consciously avoiding what I, I would kind of characterize as, you know, pure advocacy materials, because I don't think that's helpful. Um, you know, e either way. Um, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I have a, a science background, and so I tend to think in those terms and and just, you know, really looking for what I think are, are quality resources. So, yeah. And there's a lot to look at, you know, yeah. out there. I mean, there's there there's EPA reports. There's, um, you know, there are studies. You know, I know this was an issue for, for, for Jill in the last meeting. You know, California studies are, are nice, you know, or, or, or Texas studies are nice, but are, are do our fields really you know compare to that whereas you know i think some people have referenced there's a martha's vineyard study there's a portsmouth new hampshire study um you know uh those might be those might be particularly interesting for us too i think lexington did some work recently on this so I, you know i don't necessarily want to start saying oh we'll do this and not this but I, i'm totally with you marvin there are i think the best would be a government study you know and then sort of working from there, working down from there, um, and then try to find things that, you know, are specific that, that have particular relevance or saliency to to our our situation in Arlington. But in terms of, you know, sort of the the three headings for our groups, um, what are your thoughts? I mean, is it as simple as health, safety, environment? And then we put some nuance behind what each of those means. Um, I mean, it could be that simple, and certainly that would be the most consistent with our charge from town meeting, which was health, safety, and environment. Um, but I just want to be sure everyone's comfortable with that before we, we go down that road. As long as yeah, we cl clarify what the difference between health and safety is, because yeah, I'm not quite sure yes. what goes where. Yeah, because, you know, some people use them synonymously, and others um, see them as distinct ideas. So, Marvin, I, I know you had some thoughts on sort of Right. I, you know, again, as, yeah. as an industrial hygienists, I, I tend to look at them as being, you know, kind of sections of a whole. Um, you know, when I go into a workplace, I'm not only trying to make sure that people aren't, you know, affected by, you know, kind of chemical exposures, but aren't getting, you know, you know, lacerations because of unguarded blades or, you know, slipping on wet floors. And it, to me, that's all, you know, that's kind of part of it. So I, I, you know, it's, I suppose it's possible to differentiate, but to me, it's not, um, I've kind of never kind of approached, you know, workplaces in that way. So I would, I, you know, my, my kind of default is just looking at everything that, you know, could hurt somebody. So maybe we want chemical health and safety and then other health and safety. So there's a group specifically looking at the chemical piece, which has a lot. And then things like heat and mental health and everything else is in another health and safety bucket. Because I think, you know, burns, abrasions, things like that, right. that's, you know, that all falls into kind of the, the general health and safety bucket. But I, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy to work with whatever, you know, organizational structure the group decides is appropriate. That's fine. You know, I'm not here to impose my will on anybody. So, you know. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, health and safety, you know, I think there is definitely, based on our discussion last week, I mean, there's there's definitely, you know, a chemical side, right, which is where you take the deep dive into things like, you know, PFAS and, and, uh, and other pieces, mm -hmm. uh, or just any of the kind of chemicals that, you know, go into making the product, uh, or, or chemicals that are naturally found in our, in our fields, um, versus heat, skin abrasions, I sort of see those as distinct health and safety issues um, from the chemical question. I mean, there, there's certainly some overlap, but, you know, whether a kid's going to pass out because, you know, they're in a, they're in a heat Island is different than whether a kid, you know, is going to, um, you know, get toxic poisoning, you know, I mean, they're both concerns, but there's sort of different research paths. Um, uh, so we were sort of, uh, and this is natural, we're, we're sort of heading more into now the fourth discussion, which is defining the project scope, which is, you know, well, how do we fill in those buckets? Um, <clears throat> you know, any thoughts, further thoughts about sort of health and safety, uh, environment? Because, um, you know, we want environment to be independent, right? We don't want it to just be more health and safety discussions, you know, maybe that's more of a discussion of you know, the chemical side of this, but maybe it's more, you know, what's this, what's the situation with water runoff? What's the situation with, um, uh, you know, uh, creating, I mean, you know, like I said, it could, it could lead into heat island discussion too, but, you know, safety, you know, environmental issues just related to, uh, you know, sustainability as well, uh, which I know came up. Uh, and I don't know, can, uh, maybe I should stop here. Did I, I'm assuming most of you went to the forum back on I think it was what May 2nd or 3rd but for those who maybe didn't I hope now uh having circulated the video everyone's either seen the video or seen the forum which you know was very well done obviously sort of even with a two and a half hour forum still only sort of touched the surface of these issues um and so you know it, it's a good reference point or maybe even a starting point but there's more for us to do so you know, thoughts on, thoughts on, you know, what, I mean, we can just go literally one by one and, and, and do this, do this, do this, you know, right now, sort of what, what do people see in the health bucket? What do people see in the safety bucket? And what do people see in the environment bucket? I hate using the term bucket, but we'll just do that for now. <laughs> I guess one question, Jim, is, is would the environment there's like sort of impacts on individuals and then there's impacts on sort of the greater world Would the environment piece include all of the sort of non-individual impacts so like the chemicals you know obviously they have impacts on individual people that's you know the maybe the, the biggest issue but then there's you know runoff and where what happens to those chemicals in the rest of the environment so i just want to make sure that that was my assumption i just want to make sure that that wasn't the, yeah, and, and you know, by the way, I'm, I'm not advocating this, but environment can be broadly defined. You know, what's the impact on the in, the Arlington environment? You know, there's a feeling of like physical environment, but you know, what's the environment in terms of ability to use the fields in town? You know, I mean, it's sort of the the, the structural environment uh, that we're operating in. Um, um I yeah, guess. I'm, this, this is where I defer to you. I, I you know, I have I, I have ideas, but I they're sort of very unformed right now, and I really defer to the wisdom of this group, the collective wisdom. Yeah, I guess just when you said that, Jim, you know, yeah, we haven't really talked about sort of the differences in usability as much, and I guess you know, I'm not sure where that comes in to the discussion, or is that maybe the whole group is talking about that once we've sort of done these deep dives in these working groups. I'm wondering if, um, Jim, maybe instead of us trying to put things into buckets, should we just start listing some of the things that are of concern and then I can keep a running list and maybe we can yeah. try to figure out yeah. where they go? I think, I think that... that's actually a good approach. It might might help us uh, move things along in a more effective way. So, I mean, I think we've said heat. Heat yeah. is definitely an issue. Um so Joe. heat in, I'm yeah. hearing two things, heat, I'm sorry, Joe, heat in yeah. terms of, um, you know, uh, the climate and then heat in terms of how it might affect Health. a user. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think both. So, so I was going to say, it It sounds like, and again, I don't know if Natasha, you have that their turf form. I just think we're kind of 
we don't want to re you know let's make it as easy as possible right and so if we if you go through the slides of the turf farm which i think again had had pros and cons and conservation experts and rec experts and maybe you looked at that for like what jumps out on each slide and then we could put that into a bucket it's kind of already in buckets instead of us trying to like think oh you know and i don't know it just might be a starting point that we can actually look at something and it might prompt some ideas that we all have but i think trying to just kind of pick out of the blue pfas or you know toxicity or you know habitat it just might be easier that's all i'm saying just to help get a list going do you have that i mean are you, are you looking at the slide right now joe I'm, I'm not i mean i can pull it up i don't know if natasha i sent it around yeah with it's, it's um, just it's just a it's just a suggestion because yeah. why re why recreate the wheel if we already kind of did some of that and you could decide what is relevant and what bucket you want to put it in because it's already kind of in buckets too. Yeah. So if you want, I can take a stab at it, or if someone else wants. I'm sorry, I had my head down, so I don't know if someone else had. Mike, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, I, Jim. I just took over and I didn't mean no, to. No, 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 no. This is a group discussion, really. In in terms of the environmental bucket, if you will, or subgroup or whatever you want to call it, I think there are uh, a whole bunch of issues, such as impact on water quality, impact on uh, uh, critters in the water bodies nearby, uh, the uh, uh, effect on wildlife uh, and fisheries. Uh, th there's a long list such as that that easily can be uh, listed, at least for the environmental issues. And I think that, the, as we were saying before, that overlaps a lot with public health and uh, related issues. Uh, but I think that, uh, uh, you know, I can come up with that list, if you'd like, of, of what I think constitutes the issues for environmental uh, concerns. So I'm just trying to help us. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I could use the help. <laughs> okay. So I'm just wondering if we start thinking about like health, I'm just, I'm just going to throw out some things and you guys just tell me what you think or what have you. So when I think of health, I'm thinking of um, exposure. So someone being exposed to, you know, a chemical and what that might look like. So I don't know if that's like risk exposure evaluation. Um, that's, one thing that I'm thinking of in terms of health, I'm thinking, um, you know, I'm drawing a blank. I had all these thoughts and now I'm on on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so no, you're saying that... the type of chemicals and the quantity, it's going to be important for exposure. And the, the duration. Yes. For how long someone might be exposed to something. So I think that in and of itself is one aspect of health that I'm really sort of like, I think needs to be taken into consideration. Um, so that's one piece under the health that I was sort of thinking, I guess another piece that I, I don't know where it sort of falls and um, without sounding like a complete idiot, I guess, um, I'm wondering if access or accessibility to uh, these types of fields is another piece that we should look at in terms of, you know, um, social determinants of, of health and people being able to access um, a variety of different fields and options. And I don't know if that falls under health. Um, well, I, you know, I don't know where it naturally falls. And I know this was a point Leslie had made at our last meeting about, you know, mental, behavioral health, mental health. You know, we should not dismiss that as a as something uh, that should be something that we we should look at as just figuring out where the right place is but if you know if we're seeing health through the lens of the effect this these fields have on people um in its broadest sense if that's the way we view it then, then it certainly couldn't naturally go there um I wrote down a couple of the things. So we had the, I think I already mentioned that though. In terms of um, safety, I think about injury. So um, we probably want to look at, you know, um, and I think this is naturally going to happen, like the comparisons of injuries on natural turf versus artificial turf. 
Um, so I think, are we looking at specific injuries or just any injuries? Um, I think any. And I think it- Any, but you know, the focus I would think would be, you know, um, skin abrasions, uh, you know, falls, right. you know, yeah. you know, do you, you're more likely to injure yourself, you know, on a fall on artificial turf versus regular, uh, you know, uh, natural turf. Um, you know, heat, heat injuries, uh, you know, we're, we're in that discussion. Cause I, I think I could pull up peer reviewed articles that talk about like ACL injuries, but almost anything I've observed is like a well manicured natural turf field. Like I think I'd go watch UMass soccer and it's like a field that like literally only plays one soccer game a week and maybe a couple practices. So how do we, how do we, and I, maybe this is for next week, but how do we find data that doesn't lead to like a conclusion that isn't a reality? And so, so this might be fine to table till next week, but I think I we're going to. I think that is a key discussion, careful. Jill. And I, and, I, and I don't mean to be dismissing that point. It's a hugely relevant point. Um, I think that's our, the crux of our, our meeting next week, right? Like, okay. okay. We now know the focus areas, but how do we make sure we're reading studies that actually are going to tell us something valuable as opposed to stating, a, you know, an, either an obvious point or stating a point that's kind of, you know, been heavily weighed in one side or the other. But, right, because there are, I mean, there, there are studies that have been. Leslie, you seem to be college level and professional athletes. Sorry, Leslie, could you say that again? We we lost you at a key part there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, there are studies that have been done that look at the effects on professional athletes. We're not talking about professional athletes within the context of the town of Arlington. And so I'm struggling a little bit with um, where where we're going. I mean, there is, you know, the science and the chemical uh, composition and effects, I mean, we can look at. But I struggle with bringing it back to the context of the community that we're in. Uh, you know, we're, we're not Martha's Vineyard worried about um, drinking water contamination. We are concerned about the impacts of these chemicals and some of these fillers on our wetlands, for example. But so, so you know, here is is where I, I've got this, this real, uh, I'm really conflicted in looking at, you know, the greater global studies and not looking at how this specifically impacts our community. We do have two artificial turf fields that have been installed, one at the high school, one at Arlington Catholic. The rest of our fields, playing fields, are natural turf. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this out there as just a completely off, off the book thought. Can we look at, do we have statistics? Or um, can we look at the impacts of our artificial turf environments to our natural turf environments locally here and how the two differ and what the issues are with those specific um, in uh, those, <laughs> they're more than environments, but with those two, with those specific cases you know, do our own case study of Arlington and how artificial turf has impacted Arlington. I mean, I, I get, again, I'm just throwing that out there. I, I think these are relevant questions. And, and I, I think, um, and I, I, I sorry, I sorry, because I keep saying this, and it, it's not meant to be dismissive. It's, it's actually, but I think this is all the key, key discussion for next week. Um, of, you know, okay, these are the issues we're looking at. What are our research pathways here? Is it is it is it reading studies? 
is it getting first person testimony is it getting you know expert testimony is it is it doing our own research you know that that's where you know we decide okay we've decided you know the health bucket we're looking at this the the, the safety bucket we're looking at this the the environmental bucket we're looking at this okay now n- now how do we go about and find relevant information to make some decisions from that um you know and, and and let me say this is the hardest part of this committee right it's the early steps it's the, it's the deciding even what you're going to look at um forget about you know uh, how you're going to look at these things but just you know what's the baseline to look at and, and i think joe's right the the forum you know lights the way a little bit for us but i just want to be comfortable where we're covering the topics that people feel like we need to cover knowing there might be some overlap, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to go too far down any road. And then some, someone says, well, you know, we should have added this here and, you know, it's now we're too far down the road, but maybe that should have been part of, you know, the environmental piece, or maybe that should have been part of the health and safety piece. Um, so Natasha, I think you would sort of laid out the potential. I think you'd started with the health the health you moved on to the safety i don't know if you were still filling that in a little bit yeah so um in terms of safety i was looking at sort of the the injury piece i think i already mentioned that i don't know if materials comes into play here um in terms of i mean i think in some level it might be the the chemical piece here like it it kind of might be this intersection intersection um I'm just going to give the examples that I'm thinking and then let's go back because I don't know how else to do it. Um, in terms of environmental, you know, some of the things that had been mentioned, you know, obviously um, wildlife, um, groundwater, or water quality, if that's, you know, a concern, um, you know, climate, you know, runoff, run run off. yep, yep. Um, so those are just some of the things. And I, I did take some and some of the other pieces are like okay you know are we looking at fertilizers are we looking at pesticides are we looking at you know and i think that all kind of falls under chemical anyway um you know i think i I did try and go through the um artificial turf forum to sort of take a look at some of those categories um and and that's sort of just what i jotted down um briefly but maybe we can circle back to other people have thoughts on what should be included in health. Um, Well, so one, I mean, sorry, I don't mean to monopolize the discussion. Um, I mean, one area that the forum covered uh, a little bit and it doesn't, you know, perfectly fit within health, safety and environment, but I think it's something we all agree is sort of in there implicitly, if not explicitly is, um, you know, sustainability is one piece of it, but also maintenance. Um, which, you know, brings in an economic argument too, but, um, you know, maintenance, what, what, you know, there's definitely, there was a big debate at that forum of, you know, someone, it was never resolved. It was a point of contention. Uh, do you need to water artificial turf? There were those who said you most definitely do. And there were others who said that's completely false. Uh, you don't need to water artificial turf. I think that's important. And maybe it's part of the environmental part, but, you know, what it takes to maintain these fields not just the costs, but the the efforts, I, I think, has got to be a relevant piece of this because if if you know, it, it, and maybe it fits better under environment, um, you know, sustainability and maintenance. Maybe that's all kind of one one element there. But I, I think we need to cover that some or another. Well, that would be part of the comparison between the two kinds of fields. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, one of the easy ways to perhaps address this is to say we've been given by the town meeting uh, three topics to deal with. And so maybe if we just say we'll deal with those three topics, health, safety and environment. And as we've been saying, a lot of different things can come under each of those. But I think if we start off with those three uh, and then figure out, try to figure out which uh, items don't fit or do fit under the three categories. I think that's our challenge, as as Jim was saying. I think it's pretty easy to stick the safety, the maintenance one we're just talking to under safety, because I think that lets us have a comparison between 
the grass fields we're trying to maintain and turf fields and whether there's a difference in the safety there. So I think either type of field, if you can't properly maintain it, becomes unsafe. And then also adding in the, you know, whatever the lawn maintenance chemicals and things would be in the chemical piece. So um, part of why I've been trying to sort of, and, and maybe maybe I, maybe we don't, maybe people are willing to take a leap of faith on each of these working groups. So part of the reason I've been trying to sort of fill in a little bit of, of, of the focal, focal points for each of these um, uh, working groups or subgroups is uh, because I was hoping people would volunteer to join them tonight. Um, uh but i know it's hard to join something when you're not really sure what your what your uh focal focal points will be um so um there might be someone sitting here right now saying well you know i i, I might go to the safety group but not if it's going to be all about x y and z uh you know uh, or i might go to environment but i don't want to spend all day talking about maintenance you know and sustainability i want to talk about other things you know so Part of why we're trying to do this is so people feel comfortable maybe making at least a preliminary commitment to join uh, a subgroup. Well, um, one thing we could do, Jim, is to just set up the groups, have people volunteer to join a particular group, and then let the group figure out what's going to be dealt with in that particular group. Uh, rather, I'd, than I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that, but would others be okay with that? As long as we come back to it, because we don't want to miss something important. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like the first meeting of each subgroup. They need to come up with like this is what we're going to tackle, and then report it back. Right. And then we can sort of see, you know, maybe start with Natasha's list and build from there. And then, but then we all know, okay, if we if we like Jill said, if we miss something, we'll see it. Yeah, I think that would be the uh, task of the first meeting, the subgroup, to say, here are the topics we're going to look at. Um, I, I'm very comfortable attention. with that. If, if people are comfortable, it certainly would save us some, some time and energy right now trying to be more prescriptive and um, be a little more, uh, give give the groups themselves a little more latitude and then maybe report back what they what their thoughts are. Um, so... It sounds like there's fairly broad consensus that a health, separate health, safety, and environment groups would be a good starting point here. Um, I think there's seems to be consensus that um, maybe you know, having a rough idea what's in each of these. I think we we Natasha has given us a rough idea maybe what could be in each of these, but letting each of the groups kind of nail down the actual points they they want to be the, the the focus areas and then um well i think this now sort of leads to the question of i think we should meet next week um i think we have to to keep the momentum going the question is do people to make a really effective meeting next week there would be at least one um and it doesn't even have to be a meeting, you know, it can be just an email dialogue, right? If if we're not, if we're not, as town council says, if these are less than a quorum in any one group, then we're not violating the open meeting law. You know, you could have a, a freedom to have a, a bit, little bit, of, a little bit of a back and forth uh, on an email, unlike the larger group can do. Um, but um, uh, it would, I think, um, be good if people came into the next meeting with two things um with an idea of okay these are the four or five areas it can be more than that it can be seven or eight it can be two or three but these are the areas we would think should be our our focal areas for this subgroup and then the second piece which we will spend most of the next meeting talking about or maybe all of the next meeting is um okay for the environment group these were our focus areas and now this is kind of our proposed research path without ne not necessarily delineating this study, this study, this study, but, you know, this is the kind of areas now we want to kind of pursue uh, before, you know, over the course of the following two weeks leading into our January meetings. Does that make sense? It's a tight timeline because our next meeting I was going to propose to just be next Tuesday at five. So it's, um, it doesn't give people a lot of time to have maybe necessarily have a formal meetup 
but maybe it can just be, you know, an email back and forth. And if people want to hop on a call, that's fine. But um, so if people are comfortable with that, and I sort of don't see anyone looking like they're uncomfortable with that. <laughs> um, maybe, Natasha, the key thing now is to find out who would be interested in being in what group. Yep. So do you want to just kind of, maybe I'll just go around and see what folks are interested in. Um, yeah. So do, do you want me to do that? Yeah. Maybe we All do right. it like a roll call and you say, but, you know, what would be your first choice, uh, you know, and... Um, Okay. And then, I mean, we'll see where the numbers land. Maybe give us a first and second choice. Right. All right. So we'll start with um, Mike. What's your your first and second choice? The uh, environmental uh, bucket would be my first choice. And uh, I guess I'd have to look at uh, safety as a second choice. Okay. And um, Leslie? You're I think she's oh, I'm sorry. I'm muted. Hang on. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I I fell out and had to come back in. Oh. Um, I guess safety would be my first, and environment would be my second. Okay. Uh, Joe Barr. Uh, probably environment is my first, and then um, health would be second. Okay. Um, Jill? Health and then safety. Okay. Um, I'm next, but I'm happy to go last, or I can go now. It doesn't matter. So I guess, like, health health would be my first. <laughs> um, I <don't> think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I guess uh, I'll go with environmental as second. Okay, so that's me. Um, Marvin? Health first, then safety. Okay. And Jim? Um, well, I'll take the uh, coward's way out and just say, um, I'll go wherever wherever the, the numbers are, need me. I could do any of them. They're, they're all of interest to me, but I, I guess wherever wherever the numbers work out, I'm happy to go. Okay. And then we have um, David Morgan and Joe Conley who are non-voting members, but I, I so I, I do believe that they would be able to participate on a working group. Um, so I can go. I, I think so. We should operate under that assumption. We can check with town council to be sure. Okay. But, you know, I mean, I think they should be able to. It's, certainly their input would be quite valuable. Yes. Um, all right. So David. Environment and health. Environmental and then health. Joe. Conley. Changed my mind three times since I've heard everybody's decision. Um, but I'm kind of like Jim. I think wherever okay. the numbers fall, I can be happy to participate. Okay. So. I'll just go right down the list here. <laughs> we have got, I think with um, honestly first options, we might be able to just do it, it just from first options. It does. So we've got three for environment. I'm sorry, three for environmental, um, three for health, one for safety. So Jim and Joe, if you wanted to jump into safety, it would be three there. Um. Yeah, I'm happy to join Safety. Yeah. Can you uh, just give us the names in each group? Yes. Um, give me one second. I'm sorry. Uh, do you want me to put Jim and Joe Safety? Is that work? It works, yeah. Okay. So in environmental, I have um, Mike, uh, Joe Barr, and David Morgan. Okay. In safety, I have Leslie, Jim, and Joe. Um, in health, I have Jill, myself, and Marvin. And that's it. Nine of us. Everyone comfortable with that? Just yeah. one comment. Yeah. One yeah. comment I have is, um, so we have both rec people mm -hmm. in the same, and we have the invite conservation people in the same. It might make sense for 
just to mix it up a little bit. I mean, otherwise it's going to be Jim, me and Leslie are going to inundate you with um, uh, safety <laughs> recommendations, you, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and, and maybe just for environmental, we just, that way we have a different perspective coming in from each of those yeah. two subgroups. That's just, I, I thought the same thought crossed my mind. Um, I'd be interested to hear what the group has to say about that. I mean, I, I, um, it's a potential concern. I think it's worth flagging, but we can either rejigger some things or the alternative is to say, because these groups are reporting out weekly, you know, and, and there's a certain interaction between the subgroup members and the, the larger committee on a regular basis. Um, and that there is naturally going to be some overlap between these groups, no matter what we do, right? Between environment and safety and, and health and safety and, you know, et cetera. That there may be less of a concern about the deck being stacked on any one of these. Uh, and that those are, that's my phrase. That wasn't yours, Joe. So I don't want to put, put words in your mouth, but uh, I'm less concerned, but um, I do see the point and it's worth raising. And what are people's thoughts? Just from my experience, and again, maybe I'm just so scarred still from the Terraform. Um, but you know, the recs, the again, I don't want to say size because we're all on one side here. So, but the rec perspective in the conservation perspective on environment was the just totally different perception of the data. Even the data could sounds like it could be the same. And and one was saying, one expert was saying black the other one was saying white so again i i'm i'm sure and it will all come out in the wash and when we we report back but you know i just just a little concern that's all is there someone i don't want to put it on the spot but is there interest in someone who's on environment swapping to safety with joe It's okay if there isn't, but I just I, I, I'm not uh, as uncomfortable as Joe is uh, to see the uh, the way that these subgroups have worked out. I think, uh, as you were saying, Jim, that we're going to be there's going to be a lot of interaction among those subgroups and with the whole group as a the whole committee. Uh, so I don't I, I'm less concerned about um, swaying one way or the other. So the environmental group is Mike, Joe, and David. Um, and David. Joe Conley. Joe Barr. No, no, no. no. I'm Barr. sorry. Joe, Joe, um, yes, sorry. Joe Barr is on environmental. Uh so let me just let me just repeat that. So it's Mike, uh, Joe Barr, and David Morgan in terms of environmental. Um and while it is true that uh both Joe Conley and David Morgan are not the voting members. I think um, the piece here is that this is just a working group, but to Jim's point too, no one is making any decisions in these groups yeah, other no. than to bring things back. And we and all- by the way, that's the, that's, that's the whole reason that's why we're beauty. able to do it this way, because we're not making, these aren't deliberations. These aren't decisions. These are, this is sort of just, you know, a more nimble way to, to get to get some movement on some things to report to the larger group that does have, you know, deliberation authority. So- so, so Jim, I, I, I would say then next week's meeting, it's just, uh, again, and this isn't about you know, Mike and David, I, I mean, I'm sure, but it's just if, if it's where you get the data from, yeah. right? And it's going to be, you know, the studies that are presented to the entire group. I mean, um, Leslie and I could could probably get you, and again, Jim, you'll keep us honest, but, you know, and I'm sure, you know, Joe will keep, you know, Mike and David, but we could present, you know, 15 studies coming from a safety perspective from, a, you know, the benefits of, of our field. And, and the same thing, environment was the big one. When, when you looked at the, you know, the amount of concerns from, um, you know, certainly the PFAS and the rubber and the organic infill, there's so much to unpack with environment. Um, I mean, there's just thousands and hundreds of studies that could be presented through one lens. And well, that's and just... I see and, and that's where sorry to interrupt Joe. That's where I see next week's meeting being important. Okay. Um much as uh, Natasha and I were given some authority to sort of 
do a little coordination and think about some things. And we reported back to everyone and then got your input before we nailed anything down today. I, I see these subgroups, you know, over the next week, kind of beginning to think about, okay, what, what kind of studies would we look at? What kind of research would we be looking at? Reporting to the group next week. And that's where uh, Joe or Leslie, you can say to the environment group, well, you know, those are interesting studies. I've got a few I think you should add to the list too. Or Mike and David, when we say some safety studies say, well, it's good, but I've got a few I think you should look at too. Um, that's where, you know, I, I, it, it's, I'm fine with the larger group also informing the discussion, you know, uh, when they report back. That's why I was saying earlier on, I think we need some guidelines on uh, what studies we reference and look at uh, so that there isn't a one-sided approach or, or depending on where the studies come from. Uh, and, you know, I guess maybe as a segue to next week, um, and I don't want to get too far down this road because I think it would be our topic for an agenda next week, but... Um, you know, is there generally a feeling that, you know, in a hierarchy, if we were to come up with a hierarchy of, um, of research, you know, the, the preference, you know, the top of the hierarchy is something that's, you know, a government analysis. And the next level down is, you know, uh, you know, federal government analysis, state, state or local government analysis, then, you know, uh, interest, I mean, I don't know, is it is it worth talking about that for a minute or two here? I, I, we'll talk about it next week too, but you know, just in terms of giving these subgroups a little bit of a focus for when they do start to think about the research pathways they want to go down. Marvin, um, I I think that that's not a totally unreasonable approach, but I'd be really careful about making it a rigid structure. So, for example, yeah, yeah. what with the medical school, you know, which might be better than a state agency study, depending on you know what the staff is, how much, you know, the, the knowledge base of the people who are doing it, you know, where they're getting their data, who's, who's you know, who's assessing the data. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would say I would probably, you know, kind of, or it's like, I don't know how you characterize sort of an organized reputable source as opposed to, you know, something else. But, you know, I would think sort of a, a pure interest group would be kind of low on my list of, you yeah. know, people to pay attention Yeah, to. and it can be flexible. I mean, you know, there, there might be an interest group that actually puts out a really great study that, you know, is quite legitimate, you know, and it, the deck isn't stacked. And uh, uh, and there could be, as you say, a state environmental, not all state environmental departments are created equal, as we know. <laughs> and uh, there could be a state environmental study that's, you know, a total... Uh, totally in the tank for a particular interest, uh, given, you know, one particular state's focus on something. So uh, it has to be sort of a, a flexible analysis. But in general, you know, are people sort of comfortable with the general idea that, you know, the more uh, government focused, the more truly neutral, you know, type of study, you know, should be sort of more prioritized over something where there was I'm hesitant to say an agenda, but where there was an interest that, you know, paid for the study or, or did the study itself who had kind of a an interest. I think, in the I think whether it's a state or federal agency, I think a key question might be, is it a peer reviewed scientific paper? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, who funded it and who are the people in charge of it, that kind of stuff. So so keep that through the lens that you're looking having these discussions over the next week when, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not necessarily looking, I mean, Natasha, jump in here, I guess. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily looking for like a syllabus, you know, next week of like, oh, here's our group came up with these 15 studies we're going to, you know, look at. Um, you can do that and that would be helpful, but I don't think we need that by next week. Um, but, you know, obviously if you've got some reference points, some, examples you want to share that would be helpful to show you know and this is going to be an evolving process you know you, you're going to find more research as you go along it shouldn't be locked into a certain pathway right from the get-go but it gives us a sense of where you're going so if people are comfortable i don't know how much if we can i promised we would try to keep this to an hour we're a little over an hour but i still think we're nearing the finish line 
So Jim, can I just uh, ask real quick? So the asks for next week, one are, are the subcommittees supposed to try and connect in some way to try and yes. figure out? Okay, so one is- Working groups, we'll call them the working groups. Thank you. <laughs> working groups um, to connect, and this could be via email? Yeah, it's it's whatever people are comfortable with. It can be a phone call, it can be a text, it can be email. I mean, as long as you, according okay. to according to town council, we're we're staying on the right side of this. If we have under a quorum, then then I think we're fine. Okay. Um, do we want to ask if? Oh, David has his hand up. Um, one second, David. Do we want to ask if someone from each group wants to sort of take the lead on getting the group together? Before yes. our next I mean, meeting, it'd, it'd be nice if someone maybe initiated the discussion. I'm not necessarily saying we okay. were appointing appointing subgroup chairs or anything that formal, right. but someone's got to send the first email, right? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, if the health people are okay, I would be happy to send that email and figure out a time for us to talk. Um, we can either do it. We'll figure that out. But so I'll I'll take the lead on that. Um, David, I see your hand up, so go right ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I wanted to step back a little bit and touch on something that Jim said earlier, just before we conclude about maintenance and costs and so forth. That's one of those cross-cutting issues that I don't think really falls into any one of the buckets. So as we're meeting, I think we should be attentive to that concern throughout. So that it's a, it's a thread that we can follow amongst the working groups. The other thing I wanted to comments on was about sort of trustworthiness of studies and so forth. I think there's, there are a few more criteria we might consider adding to the, to the list and you know, thinking about meta reviews, like studies of studies and how many have been reviewed within a given area and the credentials of the people conducting that review and so forth. I find those really helpful, especially when getting into a, a new field where I'm like really not comfortable with some of the terminology or the concepts involved. They can they can be really instructive. Also thinking about longitudinal studies, the ones that look at the effects that we're considering over time and maybe also over different geographies. I'm not sure that it's necessary given that we're looking for more of a local focus, but those are some ideas about how it can, how we can bring in sort of a, I don't know, a, I don't know, a more for, informed approach to reading the studies because some of the work's been done for us, right? Like people have gone out and looked at the studies already and these are nice little summaries that can be packaged together. Good points, all good points. Um, so just transitioning, um, I don't mean to, uh, what was the word that you were using, Jim? To be dismissive or anything like that. But so for the environmental group, do we have anyone who would be willing to, to coordinate an email? Sure. Mike. Okay. So Mike That's will, fine. um, coordinate that. And then for the safety group, um, Jim, Joe Conley and Leslie, any one of you want to you had that email? I can send out an email. Sure. Perfect. All right. So we've got that. And so the goals for next next meeting is one for us to sort of meet within our subcommittees to try and get some topics narrowed down and then also to start thinking at least a little bit about, um, you know, what we would like, what those, what the resource parameters or guidelines might be. Um, are those two sort of the assignments that we're looking at okay great and then um meeting so new business you know i think just meeting schedule i think we sort of tentatively agreed that we would meet virtually at least through the end of the year just because it was easier with the holidays um we could reevaluate that in january maybe have an occasional meeting in person or have all our meetings in person depending on what people want or continue to meet all virtually but postpone that discussion until january um are people comfortable with another, it would be our last meeting of the year, but a final meeting uh, next Tuesday at five again? Yep. Okay, yep. virtually with a week off for the holidays, because I'm guessing that's just 
most people's preference, I assume. Certainly my preference. <laughs> I'm hoping it, others are comfortable with taking a week off there. And um, with the idea we'd come back, um, well, I guess the day after New Year's is, is, is Tuesday the 2nd. I don't know if we want to come back that quickly, but I'm fine if we do. We can talk about that at our next meeting, but think about the meeting schedule in January uh, and have some ideas for the next meeting. Perfect. Um, Jim, and can I just add in here? Um, so I'm going to be getting the packet ready. Uh, I don't think we have any holidays coming up, but just in practice, I like to try and get my packet ready to go for Thursday. Um, so my goal is to have the packet to the group and post it on the website by 9 a.m. or, you know, by 12 noon on Friday. So getting materials by Thursday night at five would really be ideal. So any public comment, any sort of, um, you know, materials that the group wants to share with everyone else, if you could just get those to me, I'll make sure that they get included in the packet. Um, I just like to build in that extra time because I have the 48 hour window and it, it gets a little hairy. So <laughs> um, you never know what's gonna pop up. And then I think um, the only other, piece i think no nope, i think that's all i had sorry Any, anything else under new business before we take a motion to adjourn do we want to so uh jim we had mentioned sending the for the public to send comments or materials or what have you to me and you do you want me to update the website and have our emails posted or i have a general town account it's boh at town um I can accept all of the information there and I can distribute it. Or if you want to put your personal email as well, that's, that's fine. Or I'll give my town email. I don't know what preferences are, but. I, I guess my preference would be maybe for a more, a more generic specific town email. Okay. So why don't, if it's okay with the group, is everyone okay if we use BOH, it stands for board of health at town.arlington.ma.us. Um, and then I'll make sure that any materials that come in are all distributed. And in the okay. meantime, I know last week we didn't have this um, set up. We could do my email. I just I just think that um, BOH is probably just easier. But BOH at town comes to me, Natasha, or you can do N Wade at, at town. Either one is fine, but they both come to me. Um, so I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought because I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. No, I think I think we're nearing the finish line okay. here. Um, I do want to thank everyone. This is, um, like I said, these are the toughest meetings because you, once you have a plan, you're off to the races. But it's figuring out the the what and the how um, that's the hardest. So I really appreciate everyone really participating today and bringing their thinking caps. So. Um, especially in a month where there's a lot going on. Everyone being available has been really valuable. So unless there's anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I guess who, who second that? Jill? And Mike? Or Jill, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. We'll go right so down. Just do the roll, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, Mike? Yes. Okay. Uh, Leslie? Yes. Jill Barr? Yep. Jill? Yep. Natasha? Yes. Marvin? Yes. Jim? Uh, Jim? Yes. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. See you next Tuesday. And I'm sure so, some of you I'll see much sooner. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>